one, Genesis Writer here with a brief tips and tricks video to help you uh, with a few lucrative things in the Master Chief Collection main menu, and also how to get into matchmaking multiplayer games a little bit easier while these servers are absolute crud right now. There's a lot of problems that are currently happening with the game, and I'm not happy to report this, but I haven't been able to get into more than 10 matches in the first four days of me owning this title which is really unfortunate, but I have found, and through research, have discovered a few little nuances to getting into a game uh, more efficiently. So you're going to go to multiplayer and press A to find a game. You're going to be brought to the multiplayer lobby. That's when you can finally see your roster on the right-hand side of the screen. So uh, the current playlists you're seeing are a very limited version of what should right now be in the full game. Because they're having so many server issues and... A lot of things that I guess weren't play tested out of the game, or I'm guessing that's the reason why there's a lot of issues going on. I'm not going to touch too much on that anyway. Uh, so to search, we're just going to select a playlist, um, which there should there's going to be a lot more playlists available when you know everything is fixed. Um, but the key thing to look for when you're searching in a playlist is on the very right hand side of your screen. Do you see? the different searching fields. Do you see uh, the spots where players can fill in and uh, be uh, shoved into your match and then the game will start? Well, if you don't see that portion on the right hand side of your screen, like you're seeing right now on my screen, if you don't see that, you're not likely to get into a game. It's very, very important that you understand this. I've had a lot of people who don't see that and see their friends uh, list. So you're going to press B and just back out to the main menu and press A again to restart the search. And this oftentimes does help. But just keep that in mind when you're searching. That will hopefully allow you to get in games a little bit easier. Now uh, let's back out again. If that doesn't work and you sit in that lobby searching for over five minutes, which to be honest is a ridiculous amount of time for an online matchmaking system to even uh, do that. But I, again, won't go into too much detail on that. Uh, there's another thing you can do, and that is press the guide button or home button on your Xbox One controller uh, back out here. And with your highlighter, you see I can move my little highlighter around. You want to be highlighting the main center, central panel like you are always when you back out. You're going to be highlighting that central panel. So you're going to want to press start, and um, that will bring up options for that center panel, like go full screen or something like that. But you can also quit the app or game. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Now if I press A again right after I've quit the game like I just did, I just pressed A, I can't restart the game right after I quit it. It's a few seconds, not very many, um, so it should be okay now to start the game again. So I'm going to press A and sure enough the game now boots up. And this allows us to restart the game, uh, kind of refresh it in the memory I guess you could say. Um, and just allow us to go into the game with a fresh start. Oftentimes. This will fix some issues or it will finally allow you to search matchmaking. It doesn't fix everything at all. I'm just saying it's another option you can use um, as sort of a last resort kind of if things, if the menu has glitched up and is not allowing you to do anything. I just want to uh, make sure that people know about this tool that you can use um, to hopefully improve the experience a little bit more. Um, so we can go back into multiplayer. Uh, click find game and you know everything should be all right on the right hand side of the screen and sure enough it is so that's a tip for you guys um, now I'm gonna back up to the main menu here let's press start to go to your options and career and let's go to your settings so I can show you something else about your controller layout this is really cool um, but a lot of people are getting kind of confused this is the first thing you want to do when you boot up the game is you want to uh, go to this menu and view the different layouts. You can pull the left and right triggers to view the different game layouts. And there, So there's four different game layouts. However, uh, the first thing I did was I went down here to the button layout and I switched it to Universal Bump and Jump, which is basically Universal Bumper Jumper. I pressed X and selected Set Options for All Games. So you can do that with any option. So for example, my sensitivity, I wanted it to be on four sensitivity for all games. So I, I went down here, selected four, and selected yes. So I don't get uh, comments down this on the, in the comment section. Most pro players find the sensitivity between three and five. I like four because it's a little bit faster than three, which is a little too slow for me. Now, a greater intricacy in this menu, which is not thoroughly explained and is annoying. 
there are two types of rumble in the Xbox One controller. There is the rumble that is in the handles, and there's the rumble that is in the triggers, okay? Those are two different things. So if I go down the list on this menu to vibration, you can see right here, that is only going to disable the vibration of the controller handles for Halo Combat Evolve. But if I press X, it disables the controller vibration in the handles for all the games, but not the trigger vibration. If you go down to the very bottom here, there is no trigger vibration for Halo Combat Evolved or Halo 2, but there is trigger vibration for Halo 3 and Halo 4. So let's go down to the very bottom of the Halo 4 menu, and you'll see the impulse triggers. Now, why the impulse triggers are options is not right next to the vibration option is beyond me, I have no idea. But you come down here, you want to disable the impulse triggers as well, press X and select yes to apply it to both Halo 3 and Halo 4. Now why would you want to disable uh, vibration? So that you can aim easier. Your controller rumbling is not going to help you aim, okay? That's a universal fact. Something rumbling when you're trying to make a very intricate precise maneuver, that thing rumbling is not going to help you aim. It's not going to help your batteries last longer. It's going to drain them way faster. I could go on and on about the reasons why you don't want to have your rumble enabled, unless you're playing a single-player game and just want the experience. So, moving on, there's another very slight intricate detail I wanted to show in the customization menu. Now, uh, the only two games you can actually change your Spartan to female are Halo 3 and Halo 4. However, in Halo 3, it is a much more intricate and... Uh, not very easily visible option. You can change your body type, but it's only the, uh, the Spartan and Elite. So people are like, okay, I can't change to female. Well, you can. The bottom left, very bottom left-hand corner is a little option. Press X, you can change your voice type to male or female. It doesn't change the body type, just changes the voice, as existed in the original um, Halo game. I really wish they allowed you, for example, in Halo 4, to customize your different pieces of armor. Unfortunately, you can only select from a bunch of chosen already preset armor types. Um, you can't select, you can't change the individual pieces of armor, but it's not a big deal. It's just a cosmetic difference. Um, now, the final thing I wanted to show is inside your player ID, you have something called the clan tag, okay? And this is different from your service ID. Your service ID is a little abbreviated name that appears above your head in matchmaking so people can identify you quickly over long distances. I have mine set to Jen, so that people know I'm Genesis Rider, obviously. Please make that something close to your actual gamer tag so people know who you are. Your clan tag, however, is unlocked after you play 50 campaign matches or 50 custom game matches or 50 matchmaking matches. I guess so this is that people don't put something random in their clan tag. I have set mine to fix the servers as a simple way of protesting that I don't really like how the game is so far. So uh, you can plug up a USB keyboard any USB keyboard really will do as long as a, even a 3.0 USB keyboard, um, if they even make that, will work on your Xbox One, which is really cool. So that's how I can type so fast. Um, so there you go. And your nameplate is obviously how you change your nameplate. That's how I have a sniper rifle in the top right hand corner right now. Now, the final thing I want to show you guys is in the main menu um, in the extra section. So let's press A on that. You're going to be able to access the Halo 5 Guardians beta from here. Unfortunately, I can't highlight that because it's grayed out. So I'm guessing everyone who has Halo the Master Chief Collection will be able to access the Halo 5 Guardians beta, which is pretty cool. You don't have to have like a code or anything, to my knowledge. You can also access the Halo Nightfall live-action series here. Really cool stuff. However, if you go over to, to video, press A on that, you can view the Halo 1, 2, and 4 terminals here, and the Halo 2 Anniversary Cinematics. But all of this is through the Halo channel. Now, when you're playing Halo 2 Anniversary, obviously you're going to see the cinematics in-game. You're not going to have to switch to something called the Halo channel. But the Halo channel is actually an app right here that I'm highlighting on the bottom of my screen. Uh, you can go to the apps uh, marketplace right here to uh, go and download the Halo channel. Otherwise, the game, I'm guessing, right here will prompt you. But the main video I want to point out is the Halo 2 Anniversary documentary. It is really, really worth watching this, uh, this documentary um, inside the Halo channel. It's a little bit over an hour long. It's not nearly as boring as other documentaries. A really, really cool video as you can see me starting it up right here. 
it's just really awesome to see videos like this and I'd highly recommend only checking out uh, the Halo channel but just uh, that documentary um, for sure please please watch that it is um, worth your time right now while matchmaking is not in its uh, best state I would really recommend going and watching that so guys I hope this video helped you understand some of the nuances and intricacies of the Halo the Master Chief Collection main menu and some things to fill your time and help you uh, navigate a little bit easier um, if you have any suggestions for me on a new video to make or something you want to see me explain thoroughly in detail a little bit more please comment down below and let me know. Let me know how you liked this video, what you enjoyed from it. Like the video, it helps other people find it. Subscribe for more future Halo the Master Chief Collection, Halo 5 Guardians beta content, and I'll see you guys in the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace.